Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Artist by the name of Pressa. Welcome, brother. What's good, MV? All right. <laughs> so, Angela. so who is Pressa for people that don't know who Pressa is? I know you from Toronto. You from Canada. Yeah. But who who is Pressa for art for people that don't know? All right. So like I I come from Canada, mm-hmm. and like I'm from like like the bottom out there. Like you feel me? <laughs> like and like I just represent like the bottom, like the voice out there. You feel me? So mm-hmm. that's how I just. How did you get signed? How did people hear you? How did you get into rapping? Uh, I was back in the day, I was like young and I was just rapping and like my best friend died, you feel me? Mm-hmm. Like the police killed him like in a shootout and stuff like that. And then I came, I, I made a song about him and that song like went crazy for the city. And I just started rapping and rapping after that, you feel me? What I love is that you're from Toronto and early on you did, a lot of people talk about their hometown, are they supportive, but you got early cosigns from yeah. Drake and Tory Lanez. So how did things change for you when Drake first put you on that stage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before that, it was like, um, I was doing like songs with like Murder Beats, uh, The Weeknd was posting me, uh, Meek was posting me, everybody was posting me at one point. Like, and then... And then Drake brought me out on tour after that, you feel me? And People then, would say, well, you know, why didn't you sign the OVO? Or why didn't yeah. you sign with The Weeknd? Or why yeah. didn't you sign with Tory? Or, you know, why why, why didn't you? Uh, I just had this, like, independent model, you feel me? Like, when I was younger, no one, they weren't really offering me a lot of money. And I, I was young and I was getting money at that time, you feel me? I was already had money, you feel me? So what they are offering me, I was like, ah, uh, like, what am I gonna do? I was more looking for like looks and like to blow up bigger. Mm-hmm. Like you feel me? Mm-hmm. So independently, you'll be able to make more. Yeah, you know, I was like, if I was gonna sign, I was gonna say, okay, yo, let's do this and like blow me to the top. Like instead of me like doing all the groundwork that I'm here now, like that I'm doing it right now. You feel me? But before when I signed, like before all that, like I didn't want to sign, so I just had this independent model. I was putting out music making money off TuneCore, you feel me? Like, I put out, like, a couple of my tapes, and I was just making, like, good money. I was, like, going through lawyer fees and stuff. And and then I'll use that money to pay my lawyer, like, my mixtape. I'll use my mixtape money. Mm-hmm. I'll be, like, a 100 grand with my lawyer using my... So I'm saying, after my lawyer, I could just start making my own money, you feel me? Now so you talk were- about the lawyer. So what were you paying your lawyer for? I uh, like I got in a couple of crazy cases. Kidnapping, and... nigga, kidnapping. <laughs> right. Allegedly, those kidnapping. charges got dropped. Yeah, Allegedly, dropped. so what's alleged? So they they alleged you for kidnapping it, and they locked you up for it. Yeah, but that like I was going through other stuff before that, and like you know. At what age? I just been like ju- my juvenile shit was crazy, you know. Mm-hmm. And then when I hit like eighteen, I started rapping, and that like brought me out of the streets, kind of. You feel me? I was like more busy in the studio than running around with my friends and stuff, you feel? Mm-hmm. So you grew up with your, your father was actually incarcerated, right? From when you were young? Yeah, my, 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 my father, he got like, he went in jail for like a murder, like he was in prison. Like he killed like a security guard or some shit. Mm-hmm. And, then, and you, was in your, you was five weeks old? I was like six months old. Six months old when your pops got locked up. But yeah. you guys did keep in contact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He raised me over the phone, you feel me? Like, I still look at him like my father, you know? Like, like I'll go visit him, like, trailers on weekends and stuff. I still look at him like father. I still look up to him and stuff like that. But he just gives me all the guidance on the phone, like, teaching me about life over the phone, you feel me? Is he out now? Because I know. Nah, he's, uh, he's Is still. He, he has life? Because usually it's 25 to life. And yeah, he's it's 25, so I figured. He got 15 to life, but then they let him out on 18, and then... He was out for like 10 months, went back in, came back out, and then he's just been back in, you feel me? Mm-hmm. He actually got out for like two weeks. They let him out, and then he got busted. He was, he was a mess, you know? <laughs> what kind of advice did he give you? Was that part of the reason why you knew you had to get out of the street? Yeah, so like like the advices he would give me, like, don't get it wrong. Like, it's it just give me survival tips, you know? Because he already know how I was living out there and, like, like to live in the streets, you gotta have like survival skills. You feel me? You gotta be able to 
navigate and get out of it. It's not about like being in there. You feel me? It's about like putting on for you and your family and your friends around you. You know. Mm-hmm. And we was asking before you came in here about the Caribbean influence in your music. Well, it, no, his father's Jamaican. Yeah, yeah, my father Jamaican, but all the Jamaicans, they like you see how they came to the nineties mm-hmm. in New York. When they, those same time they're coming to the nineties. Uh, all those Jamaicans were coming to my block, Jane and Finch, you know? So, like, when you hear Vibes Cartel, say, like, Finch and Jane <laughs> and stuff like that, it's, like, like the shower posse. Like, this is back in the day, like... And my dad was, like, their, like, little young boy for, like, the Jamaicans and stuff like that, you know? Tell me about that neighborhood, because I always hear you talk about Jane and Finch, but I've clearly never been there. So can you break down, like, what that's like? It's, like, the first, like like, projects in... Toronto, like the first ones to like be out there to like really do it, you know, and yeah, that's what it is. Like, fuck, if you, you do your back. history, you could just find it all. Like, you know, the fans know all what is going on, but I'm not gonna sit up here and talk crazy, you know. Right, but it made you who you are today. Too, yeah, you way. know what I mean. Like, it just made it. I'm happy from growing up where I'm from, like the block and stuff, cause it taught me like I feel like I'm much more smarter than the average person you feel me right. like I could navigate life like I have more people skills with people like I just know how to deal with people I'm more like realer person you know like mm-hmm. I'm more like true to myself rather than I see a bunch of people that they're just not true to theirself and that's like a downfall for them you feel me it's not even a downfall for me like when I'm dealing with you because I'm only gonna deal with you for like now a couple of hours or a couple of days but that's what you're gonna have to deal with for the rest of your life you know so i just be a true person you know? what was your big break that got you your deal and got you kind of people knowing who you are because you got records with little ooze yeah. you got records with so many different artists what was that big break for you you know what happened like i had a deal and i never signed my deal for like a whole year what you mean like like i had deals and stuff but there was a deal with sony that i that i'm in right now mm-hmm it took me like a year to sign it because I was just going through this thing like, yeah, I'm independent. Like, I want to be down. You know, like just all, all artists, yeah, all artists all, got yeah. that independent, <laughs> like, like, like ego. You feel me? So mm-hmm. I had that like independent ego to the max. I was making a lot of money. And, you feel me? I still like the independent. I, like, there's pros and cons on it, you know? You right, it sign. is true. A lot of artists always act like in the, if you sign a deal, it's, it's yeah. whack, and you got to stay independent. Yeah. But you felt like it was important for you for... To go to a different level and stuff like that, better looks and stuff. Like, just a little bit more support, you feel me? How hard is it to be in the United... Like, coming from Canada to cross over into the United States? Uh, Yeah, it's hard and stuff like that. But, like, I did it, like, all by myself, like... Like with me and my team, you know, like all that Drake and all the cosigns. Like I did like 20 mil streams by myself. Like all that was independent, you know? Mm-hmm. And then like my Uzi songs, that's independent. And then I finally signed, you feel me? I went on tour with Drake like twice. Before that, I went on tour with like Gigs, Europe tour. Did yeah. my own tour in Canada, crazy tour. And then I finally signed before I was coming to America because I wanted to like get that extra support. So I could come to America and crack in America and break. You feel Did me? you have to uh, beat all your cases before you came here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to beat all that. You had to clear all your, <laughs> your, 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 clear your record? Yeah, I, I was going to say it because <laughs> Canada don't let nobody they know They don't let us record. there. I'm like, how the hell are you here? <laughs> That's so good. You know, th- does it ever bother you? A lot of people, I'm not going to say a lot of people, but people did... Uh, Start to hear your name when you started dating Coyle Ray. Like, that's when your name came up. So th- does that bother you that it feels like, damn, they know me for this and not my music, what I'm doing? Nah, y'all know me for that. <laughs> America, <laughs> I mean, America I mean, probably know me for that. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So America, that's what y'all probably know me as right now. But where I'm from, I'm a legend. Like, you know what I mean? Like Canada, mm-hmm. even Europe, like, you know, like, I'm a like super legend back there. Like, I'm just like, need a break in America and then I get that support because America is where it's at like all the streams and stuff like that like there's more people in America you guys' population is probably like LA's population is probably like the whole Canada so imagine if I had LA rocking with me New York rocking with me Atlanta rocking with me and then I had my whole nation Canada rocking with me you know what I mean Mm -hmm. Did, did it bother you at all 
Ah, uh, yeah, like people come up to me, ah, uh, Coilerae's boyfriend and stuff like that. But, <laughs> you feel me? But they don't, they just don't know me. Like you feel me? But like when you, mm-hmm. but it's okay because they're gonna later on find out Ooh, about me. Right. It actually will make people go back and listen and yeah. be like, who is it? Because I also feel like when you're breaking here, it's whatever it is. Like for that name recognition, that's how it starts, and then people hear it, like, oh, that's what he sound like. Okay, yeah. and then yeah. that's how the ball gets rolling. Are y'all still together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's All my right, baby. Just had to make sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my baby. How did, how did you meet Coilerae? Um, I just been uh, our attachments brought us together. Mm-hmm, that song. And I wanna the song. You feel me? Who I love her. Song she's of- a goat. Like you know, she's a she's fire. And I've seen you like 17 times, Preston. You, and Preston does not speak to me every time he sees you. <laughs> you have? Hell no. I you speak to him? Yes. I said, what's up? I give him the head now, yeah. but he don't speak. I'm like, damn, I know he's Why you don't like him? I don't want him to think nah, that. Nah, I, 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 I don't speak to people. Like, what? You know what I mean? Like Just when I'm out, I've seen him seventeen times. <laughs> Wait, hold on, back up. You don't speak to DJ Envy when you're out, or people? Nah, I do, to- I do, but I just like hell, me. Uh, it's like for these times, like uh, like you know. You so. speak to him here, but just not outside. Nah, because usually seat. I'm doing interviews with Coyle Ray for like yeah. the BET Awards or yeah. we're doing some red carpet stuff. Yeah, exactly. And I see him all the time. He give me the head nod, but he never speaks. I'm like, damn, I know he a rapper. Like He probably trying to let her get her shine while she's about to do her free it's stuff. Her, it's, her, it's her red carpet, you feel me? I was just, yeah, I was just supporting her, you feel me? Mm-hmm. When did y'all decide to make it like Instagram official? How was that? Uh, uh, she, she just, I don't even remember. It was just like, I think I just posted her on the yacht, like just... It's natural. It's just regular. You feel me? Right. Does she have you open up more? Cause <laughs> I see, I seen Coyle Ray had a uh, little baby doing these dances on TikTok. <laughs> TikTok dances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does she make you open up now? We'd be like, come on, baby. We need content. Yeah, yeah, she'd be like, you need content. You need content. <laughs> I learned a lot from Coyle. You know, like, she teaches me a lot. You feel me? Cause she's a artist living it right now. You feel me? Mm-hmm. And she teaches me, yo, I gotta get this TikTok. We'll be anywhere. Like she'll be getting that TikTok. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> So that was, just shows me you gotta have like, it's just not just gonna run by itself. Like you gotta true. run this stuff. There's other things that that make you make the music what it is. You feel me? How supportive are you when like they go through their little spurts where it seems like they try to attack her? You know what I mean? Like they'll show the one song that nobody knows, but then they won't so- show the songs that people do know. Yeah. So, so how supportive are you when 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 you see that on Instagram or social media and all that? You know what it is like, um, like. So, so her, say that again. Like, so I get so, the you question. Know, they attack her on social media okay, sometimes yeah. for her, for her performance and stuff. So how how are you being a, a supportive boyfriend and support her and help her through those those times? Because I mean, it could be stressful. Now you know what it is like. They always mention the like you said they like the bad stuff, but they they don't really mention the good stuff she's doing. She's doing like like so much good stuff. Like all that stuff should just cancel out whatever they're saying. You feel me and. Mm-hmm. I've I've been going through a lot of that stuff too. They say I'm um, all oh, this, this, that, this, that, this, that, but I don't. I just say ha ha ha, laugh about it. Yo, look, I be at my friend. Yo, look what they're saying. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I I be laughing at my you own comments. Want to go back to the old press and be like, you know what? I'm gonna have to smack the hey, fish out of somebody. You never thought of that? <laughs> nah. There's one time like I see something that was like, uh, press looks like uh, uh, he looks feminine. I'm like, press gonna come around and smack somebody. <laughs> Um, you know what I mean? I'm just a chill guy, fam. Like, it, it takes me a lot to get angry, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm more of a chill smile everywhere. Like, you saw what Coyle Ray's response was to that anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> what was the response? You know I mean? It's something about his print. Oh. <laughs> Which, by the way, women always say you should never uh, talk about that because then that make other women slide in your DMs. <laughs> Did that make other women slide in your DMs? Um, nah. Nah. Uh, yeah, bitches be in my DM, but I don't fucking, <laughs> I don't say nothing to them or nothing. You, know I mean? you don't? Like, Do you ever discuss that? Like, why did such and such try like to hit me up? it's disrespectful. Like, you know, like a girl hitting me up and when I'm in a relationship, you feel me? Right. And you live in L.A. now, right? Yeah. How do you like that? How different is that for you? I actually like L.A., but I've been. Love in New York right now. Mm-hmm. You know, New York's lit. What you love about New York? I this, I've been to New York a couple of times, but like right now, this New York trip was just I don't know. It's just different. What you, you know? been doing? <laughs> Let us know. Yeah, I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> I've been bowling. I've just been recording a lot of music. I got like great music done. Who'd you link up with out here? Um, I was in New York out here with like Rowdy, Rowdy, oh, yeah, my dog, Rowdy, Rowdy and Bobby. Bobby. I fuck with them hard, like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? They're like gang, gang, and then fucking Thugger. I've been fucking with Thugger, like, mm-hmm. 
a lot, you know? He just came up here for the first time ever. It, n where? To the, the breakfast, breakfast club. club. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he just coming now, huh? Yeah. yeah. Not that well, he, said, he said he wanted to torture Charlemagne a couple years ago. And beat him up. Yeah, so it was kind of... <laughs> but they made up, though. They good now. They good. They all right yeah, now. Doug on my dog, third yeah, row Doug, shit. Doug is a good dude. Now, you also have your own record label. Gigs. You know Gigs? You guys heard Gigs? Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Gigs, my dog, you know? Um... He out here now. He just we we're just at Madison Square Garden. Me, um, Meek, Meek, concert, yeah. Meek brought him out. So it was dope. I got a song with him. I'm about to drop. I got a song with Bobby about to drop. Oh, uh, nice. Not Bobby. Uh, Rowdy. Mm -hmm. Uh, dead body. Yeah, dead body. Now what's that about? <laughs> just some stuff for music, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How hard is it for you? Like when it comes to music, do you ever have to censor yourself? On things because people do be listening and to your music when it comes to, you know, because you've music. had things in your past. It's just music, you know. Mm -hmm. It's all music, you know. Right. And how have you evolved when it comes to doing interviews? Because it does feel like sometimes you don't want to say anything, like as a reserve. You're kind of a reserved person. So is it hard for you to have to go out and do these press runs? Press is still act like you talking to the feds a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> nah, you know, everybody watching and stuff, you know, you gotta just be. Careful. But like not even that. I have nothing to hide. You know, I'm just here. To, it's just music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I have nothing to hide. Now the album Gardner Express. What what is what is Gardner Express? All right. So Gardner Express is like my last name's Gardner, and Express got like press in it. Mm -hmm. But Gardner Expressway is like the highway of my city. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Right. So it's like the highway had my whole name in it. So I just took it. In. Makes sense. I love Ember used to be a gardener. I was not a gardener, man. Somebody put that on my Wikipedia. They make up shit on my Wikipedia. What, a gardener? So Your I last was name? a gardener growing up. Oh, uh, gardener. And, and then I was gardening Clue's uh, house, and then that's how I met Clue. It's just stupid, but people believe it. Like, they was like, mm -hmm. yeah, you were a gardener? No, I wasn't no fucking gardener. Do I, do I look like a gardener? Do I look like I handle tomatoes and cucumbers? Pause. But nah, I don't, I'm no gardener. But I, I love Toronto, and I, and I always love Toronto. I mean, is Toronto back open yet or not yet still? Uh, it's about to open up soon, but. Uh, Toronto's the best city, yo. I, like if you're not from there, you have the best time there. Like. I have the best time there. The food is great. Mm -hmm. We go to the hood and go get the Jamaican the food. The Jamaican food. Yeah, you got the oxtail. Yes. Cool on my. Ab absolutely. The parties <laughs> are, are, are amazing. I have a great time every time I go to Toronto. It's cold mm -hmm. as fuck though in it's the winter, cold but as... other than that, I love Toronto. You ever go Caravana? Yep, Caravana. Caravana's fire. Yep. They got those festivals and stuff like Ladies, that. Ladies, don't let your man go to Carabana. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> the girls are all, <laughs> they just grab you and start dancing on you. <laughs> Fellas, don't let your lady go to Carabana. How about that? How about, How about that? that? Girls trip. Girls going to be bending over yeah, and rocking out. <laughs> In the street. Every, yeah, how about that? Yeah. <laughs> so how did you get your business sense? Uh, my business sense, like, um, just, like, just by the the, the block. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how I know it. That's what got me here. I felt like just dealing with people, and because I got I go through a lot of stuff in the neighborhood, like manipulation. Like a lot of people try to manipulate you and do something, or manipulate you to give you something, or manipulate you out your pocket. Like it's just slimy, you know, like where I'm from. So. Where w w that's where you gotta learn how to like protect yourself. You feel me? Or they're gonna you're just gonna be ran over and left in the block just like a lot of my niggas that are still out there. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Does Toronto stick stick together? Because I know at one time it seems like a nah, lot better man. now than it was. Toronto's like the ladder that you know when if you're climbing and someone pull you down then you get mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? That's how Toronto is but like me that's not my mindset. You Why do you think Toronto's like that though? It's just everybody got problems. Like, you know everybody got their little envies to each other like you know what I mean and yo if they're doing it yo we're supposed to be doing it like that like mm. they never think like we could both be doing it like that they mm. think like they don't deserve that and I deserve it like cause who are they and I'm out here and I'm doing this and that's how they feel entitled you feel me mm -hmm. it's just it's just little little men shit you know like men ego problems and stuff like that mm. but like if you see look at Atlanta everybody kind of helps each other over there you know but like me people that i get along with i would help them like you know like bring them like try to uplift them however give them records or plug them in with certain djs or whatever you feel me mm -hmm. you also have your own label blue yeah, feather records label. 
So what's going on with the label? Yeah, so like all my friends were like, we like have the most streams, like my block, you know? Mm -hmm. In Canada, like all my, even my young niggas, even some niggas that are older than me, we do the most numbers, you feel me? So when it comes to like the street music out there, like, but they're like with me, on, like with my label and stuff, like, so even when I'm signed over here doing my thing, I got a bunch of like people that go crazy, bunch of homies that are like rappers for real, like, mm -hmm. you know? Like, I don't know if you guys heard about my homie Houdini, he was like, he was like hard as shit, but he died, you know? Like they, they killed him in like downtown, but he like, I was going crazy like some of my guys got like eight mil sh eight mil views and stuff like that you know so like when it comes to the underground music like that's our lane we run that whole underground like shit mm -hmm. you know and they're all from my neighborhood kids i grew up with you know they do like 30 mil streams on spotify and stuff like that did you feel like you needed to move to la in order to blow up even bigger um or why did you move to la just because it was, I was supposed to move to Atlanta. Um, I ended up moving to LA just because it was just more like cleaner and more like, I felt like it was more nicer, you know? Atlanta, <laughs> I would've went down there, moved down there, I just would've been on some trenchy shit. Like, you know, I would've been, I could've went back to my hood for that shit, you feel me? And then I just felt like LA is more like cleaner, I could maneuver more. I got. I know a lot of people out there. The studios are fire, you know, like Record Planet. I just like LA. The vibes is crazy out there. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we appreciate you for joining us. The album comes out November. 3rd. Well, the Express Deluxe, yeah. right? The Gardner Express Deluxe album. Yeah, that's the Gardner Express Deluxe. So it's coming out on November third. Make sure y'all go tune in. You know what I mean? You guys gonna get to know me and support me. You feel me? All right. Well, it's Presser. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. All right.